Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Ajay Daga. We're going to talk today about how to write and some of the problems in writing SDC constraints. Ajay, SDC constraints have been around for a long time. What problems are people running into? Just getting them right. Uh, they write their constraints, and if they get them wrong, the chip doesn't work. And at what stage is this actually done? Is it all the way up in the very very first part of the design, or does it run all the way through the design cycle? Um, when somebody uh, come, you know, says, this is my design, they start writing RTL for it. And along with their RTL, they write the SDC constraints that accompany the RTL. And these SDC constraints tell you uh, what timing your chip needs to meet. It's the, it, these are the constraints that synthesis, place and route, static timing are all trying to see whether they meet, you know, because if they meet these constraints, then the chip meets timing. And if they don't meet these constraints, they need to keep iterating. So the constraints are key because they establish whether we meet timing or not. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Ajay, what are we looking at? So these are the different aspects to getting your SDC right. Uh, the first aspect is an engineer writes the SDC, and they're looking for feedback from us on, is their SDC any good? Uh, is it correct? Is it complete? So that's the verification aspect. And this needs to happen very early because really what we're trying to do over here is make sure the SDC is in sync with the functionality of the design. And so if we find that the SDC is incorrect, we might actually have found a design bug and it requires a design change, not an SDC change. So this needs to happen very early in the design methodology. So verification is a key aspect. Is, are your constraints correct? Are they complete? And then the next aspect is just as a matter of doing chip design, uh, you need to manage your constraints. You know, you may have got your constraints correct and complete for an IP, but then this IP goes into a subsystem. And so you need to pull these constraints up into a subsystem. And because of the idi idiosyncrasies of the way chip implementation works, it's not straightforward. It's actually a, a big problem for engineers to figure out how to take the constraints for an IP that they believe are good and pull them up into a larger design. So that's just one aspect of management. And then finally, the third piece is generation, where there are some teams and engineers who say, look, I've been burned trying to write the SDC myself and making mistakes. So can you just take my RTL and create the constraints for me? So that's the generation aspect. So very, so a lot of different things. And the cool part about SDC is it touches a lot of different aspects of the chip implementation flow. It touches simulation, it touches synthesis, place and route, static timing. So sort of spans the entire flow. How much of this is getting automated? So what's happening now is the verification uh, has been automated for a while and is, you know, engineers believe that they can provide a tool, their RTL and SDC, and get feedback on it. So the verification aspect, there's a lot of uh, traction in terms of automating it. With management, it's newer, but in the when I say new, maybe in the last four or five years, but we're definitely seeing people working on very large designs and very tight schedules saying, I need a tool to pull my constraints up the hierarchy, down the hierarchy, move it from RTL to gates. When my engineers try to do it, they make mistakes and they take too long. The generation piece, um, there is automation available, but you know it's 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 a very interesting thing. Uh, there are engineers that say no, uh, it's my responsibility to write constraints, and if you try and create them for me, you may have done it all right. But how do I know? And I'm not going to go look at this file that you've created that I've no insight into. So there's a lot of potential with generation, but there are also challenges with just getting customers to get comfortable with it. This is one of the problems we're seeing with AI too, right? Because people have been used to doing things and they understand all the pieces and how they go together as opposed to turning it over to a machine to do yeah. it. Yep. There, there is an analogy, maybe not quite as extreme as AI, but, but absolutely, you know, I mean, uh, sometimes a tool can be too smart for itself. And I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, you, you may be doing everything right, but engineers just aren't comfortable and they need to be comfortable because at the end of the day, uh, they're taping out the chip. It's their responsibility. You know, and um, if at the end of the day they find a chip didn't work because we did something wrong over here, 
um, doesn't help, you know? I mean, so absolutely what you're saying, that there is truth to that. Okay. One of the problems that people deal with also is that there is noise in some of these, uh, wherever you're writing constraints, right? I mean, you've got a lot of noise running all the way through the flow. Right, and, and that's a big deal with verification. You know, you have a lot of uh, companies out there that say, hey, we can verify your SDC constraints. Or, you're, you know, you have a lot of companies that say, we can find CDC bugs or we can find bugs in your design. And so what happens is, a cust this is the typical thing I see. A customer says, hey, I found a bug. Can you come in and show me if your tool would have caught it? And most tools come in and say, yeah, we would have caught it. The key thing then is, in the process of identifying that one issue, if you report 100 other things and the engineer finds on review that 90 of them were just bogus, you've just consumed a lot of their time uh, reviewing information that was irrelevant to them. So that signal-to-noise ratio is key to somebody adopting verification. What you really want to be able to show them is uh, there were 10 issues with their SDC and you caught all 10 and there's nothing else that you reported for them and they moved on with their life. Because all of these things are important, but there are many things that are important to get a chip out the door. So uh, noisy results don't help. And that's for us a number one priority, making sure when we verify, we only report the real issues. Do the constraints have to change over time? Do they, do you have to do they transform? Do you have to transform them? Yeah, absolutely. So Ed, that's a great question. So what happens is you write your constraints and they apply cleanly to RTL, but then you synthesize the design and names change and hierarchy changes. And now these constraints that you wrote that apply very cleanly to one design don't apply to a derived design. So then customers say, okay, how do I deal with that? They start writing wildcards. You know, they say, okay, maybe the name could go from something to something, so I'll write a star there. And as soon as they start putting wildcards, they open themselves up to mistakes because the wildcard may apply to a situation where you don't want it to apply. So the ability of a tool to take some constraints and automatically apply them to a transformed version of the design is key. And uh, But the key to do that is if you take some of these constraints that are fairly compact, maybe they wrote their constraints at 100 lines, you've got to keep that compactness. If you lose that compactness, if you take 100 constraints and write out this huge file with expanded wildcards, customers are going to say, okay, you did the job, but you know it's nowhere near what I wanted. Right. You've also got a lot more complexity coming into these designs. So now when we get into 2.5D, 3D, and heterogeneous designs, we have to start dealing with things like equivalence on a level that we didn't in the past, right? How does that affect the constraints? Yeah, just think about it, Ed. I mean, people are very comfortable for many years that they have to do logical equivalence. You know, they write RTL, and then they make sure that the synthesized netlist is logically equivalent. So you have logical equivalence there. Same thing applies with constraints. And the interesting thing about constraints is it applies in many situations. So there is the analogous RTL to gates are my constraints equivalent. That's obviously there, just like logical equivalence. But what's unique about constraints is you need to say, here's an IP. This is how I constrained it standalone. Now I've instantiated it in a larger design and I'm constraining it as part of the larger design. Is the IP constrained the same way, you know, from a small to the higher in context of a larger design? So SDC equivalence is key. Um, Any time a tool makes a transformation, you want SDC equivalence to verify the integrity of that transformation, or any time an engineer makes a transformation. Very important. What happens when you get a last-minute change, an ECO or, or some other problem comes in, or you, you've decided, okay, we're going in a completely different direction? How does that affect the constraints? Has an impact. Uh, this happens routinely, Ed. So what happens is um, people, you know, one aspect of constraints are timing relaxations where an engineer sticks his neck out and says, you know, you don't have to meet a single cycle timing requirement for this path. I'm going to give you an additional clock cycle. And what engineers do, the designers, they're very risk averse and the management wants them to be risk averse. So they say, don't stick your neck out and say that you have two cycles unless the implementation team says, I can't meet timing. So then you have this classical situation where you hand off a design and give it to a back-end team and say, go implement it. And the back-end team tries their best and say, no, we can't. We need, to, we're, we're just struggling closing timing. So they come back to the RTL designer and say, is this false? Is this multi-cycle? And the RTL designer then goes, says, okay, fine, go add and update your SDC. So you went with some SDC, you tried to close the chip, you couldn't, so you added a bunch more, and now you've got SDC prime. 
And over there, you've, there, there's so much risk. I mean, what if you made a mistake? And so absolutely, you know, I mean, in as designs evolve, as they've struggled to meet timing, constraints get updated. And so there's a lot that needs to be done there, you know, to help the engineers get those constraints when they can't close timing. One of the big issues for almost any design that's complex is partitioning because you have to break this apart. You have to have all these pieces working together. What impact does that have on designing constraints? Absolutely has a lot of impact because you start off with a certain hierarchy for the design and then you have uh, exploration tools or the engineer may decide to move the hierarchy around, move uh, design information around. And when you do that, the constraints need to adapt too because you've changed hierarchy. So one of the things that is an important aspect of SDC management is demotion. This whole idea of taking constraints for a chip and then based on the way somebody wants to implement the chip, pushing the constraints down for different hierarchical portions of that design. And so customers use the tool, you know, say, okay, I'll give you flat level constraints, push them down to different hierarchies. Now I'm gonna make a change to the way I partition the design, handle that, create new constraints for the new hierarchies in my design. Absolutely, that plays a key role. Is the automation of the, all this keeping up with the complexity? We're trying to, Ed, and that's, that's the honest truth. Uh, we need to, we're trying to, this is an important problem for customers. But, the, but there are a lot of challenges, and I think we've got a very strong solution here at Synopsys. Ajay Daga, thanks for a really interesting discussion. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate the time.